Admiral's Log, August 7th, 1916. I've decided to start mothballing some of my most expensive ships. This has allowed me to still field a good portion of my fleet to allow for the protection of our crippled merchant fleet. Aside from that, I've ordered the relocation of a major part of the Baltic fleet to the North Sea. The more ships we have on the North Sea, the more British shipping we can sink. Based on the number of ships the Royal Navy still has left, we're getting to the end of the war. It's come at a massive cost to the country, the merchant fleet and my navy, but we might actually be able to win. What we need now is a few encounters with the remaining British ships to diminish the Royal Navy further. I need to force the Brits to come to the table so that the politicians and diplomats can end this war. A few 12-inch guns at the right time can prove to be very persuasive. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to episode 15 of the German 1910 campaign. As you've heard in the Admiral's log, I've started mothballing a couple of my ships. In order to do that, all you need to do is drag the entire crew off the ship. So you set the crew slider to minimum, and that mothballs the ship, which means that, for example, the difference between an active ship, such as the Kaiser Friedrich der Dritte, is 2 million a month, and this one's only 375,000. And I can very easily re-engage this ship, uh, just bring the crew back. And at this point, I have 8,500 crew members, or near enough, standing by, ready to crew their ships the moment that we get the budget to do so. The rest of the fleet, um, well, there were quite a few ships from Danzig and from Palau that were just stationed there, which probably didn't have the range, or at least not the usefulness, over there. Because I don't think the Brits are going to be operating here too much. I still have some ships operating there in Danzig and Palau defending the right flank, but overall it's probably more effective to have them over here. One thing that I don't quite understand about the game is that if you have a ship that's transiting from one port to the next, it's like it doesn't exist anymore. Because all of a sudden, uh, let's see, which one am I relocating? Yeah, I think it's one of these, the Limburg for example. These things cost 522,000 a month. Unless you're relocating them. Because then they suddenly don't cost anything. It's like the crew stop getting paid, the maintenance stops getting done. I hope that this is something that they're going to patch out, because I don't think it's the way that it should be. It does, however, give me a bit of a breather, and give me 6 million a month. And that is while I am repairing a battle cruiser and a heavy cruiser. So, um, oh crap, here we go again. I'm being blockaded again. And this has to do with them having more power projection. 35,000 versus 16,000. So that means I have to reuse or uh, re-enable some of the battleships and get my own power projection back up. Of course, that's going to come at some expense, aka 6 million a month. But in the meanwhile, I can take down another one of their light cruisers. So let's at least do that. And hopefully that means that this blockade is not going to last more than a month. Because as you could see, I'm paying 6 million a month just to get my fleet to be operational. There's our target. The light cruiser is up ahead. We're operating at too great a speed to be useful here. Don't torp yet. To probably nobody's surprise, the Friedrich Karl is still crewed by cadets. I have never had the, <laughs> the chance to get these guys trained in six years. It's really been a long war. There are the torpedoes from the ship. Hello, porpoise. Jeez, they're almost halfway through reloading their launchers already. 238 seconds. That's less than four minutes before they're completely reloaded. Okay. And they're not fast torps, right? No, they're 32.6 versus my 42.2. So they're okay. They're fairly safe to dodge, provided that you can see them coming with a well, warning of a kilometer or two would be nice. Purpose is probably not quite at the angle at which they can actually use them yet. She's heading at full speed. I need to speed up a little. Let's throw the torpedo back at them. See how they respond. Because it is a... Yeah, it's warning. They'll have some warning to deal with my torpedo. My expectation is that they'll turn starboard. And thereby reducing their speed. At least that's the hope. Okay, increase back to flank. Otherwise we won't be able to catch them. 
normal accuracy. I just need to spook these guys. I probably won't hit the torp. That's fine. Let's see. Porpoise, what are you going to do? Porpoise detected the torp. And she's very, very, very slowly turning to starboard. Enough dodge the torpedo, but also losing some speed. She's doing 23 knots now. She still hasn't torpedoed me. That's good. She's down to 22 knots. I'm doing 26 knots. So I'm suddenly a heck of a lot faster. But briefly, because I won't be able to keep that up for very long. Or rather, they'll be able to speed back up pretty quick. So let's get some 10 inch on the rudder, flood that compartment out, make them more sluggish, both in speed and uh, agility, and then finish off the light cruiser. Which hopefully will also take at least a few points away from their power projection. There you go, that's flooding, although not in the compartment that I was expecting. 23.3. Three, 23 2. 23 knots. 1.4 clicks out. 23 1. Yeah, they're circling around that 23 knot speed. Come on, give me a good hit. Nope. Torpedo angle is terrible. Fortunately, that works both ways because they can't launch at all. Uh, sorry, that's not the torpedo launchers. <laughs> That'd be scary if that was the torpedo launchers. It's just these four. Very, very light damage on the Friedrich Karl. It shouldn't really be a problem. Oh, come on. 23.1. Range, 1.1 kilometer. The two inchers are starting to add up. Slowly. They've already done about half the amount of damage that the tens have done. Yep, they have at this point. One click out. Come here. Fire is nice, but against a ship with maximum bulkheads, not that useful. 900 meters out. Torpedo tubes ready on the bow. Come on, build that aiming ladder. Get rid of that rudder, and then we can torp them. It's not that hard. I do wonder, are we inside of their smoke screen? Uh, yeah, smoke obstruction. <laughs> We're probably inside of their smoke screen now. Now, they took another flooding, but not to the rudder compartment. It does make them slower. Range, 700 meters. That seemingly just bounced. 600. Dest what? You destroyed my main gun? Could you not? I was using that. Alright. Let's see how quickly you respond to this. Probably not very. Nope, not very. That's a hit. There's your rudder and engine damaged. Now I could launch the starboard tube. Angle's not great, but it should be sufficient. Let's... Yeah, let's just keep this angle for a bit. I was going to turn all the way over to starboard, but it probably won't do me any good. Another torpedo impact. Their engines are all out. The only thing I'm careful about is their ability to launch torpedoes at me. 20% buoyancy, speed, 17 knots and dropping. 17% buoyancy, yeah, we got him. <clears throat> Hard starboard. We got him. With very minimal damage to the Friedrich Karl, it is a good night for the tortoise. Sorry, for the porpoise, not the tortoise. The porpoise. Um... I'm going to be taking a hit of 6.9 million for this month. That's because I'm blockaded again. But with my additional ships out at sea, the Odin and the Kurfürst Friedrich Wilhelm, 
I am expecting to see a very quick turnaround on that blockade. Important convoy raid. Oh, nice. Um, I get the V-13, which is attacking the Defender and the Liberty against two transports. And the V-11 is reinforcing. Interesting. Okay, let's go get him. These are the gunboats, because the other DDs don't exist anymore. So, the gunboats with the four inchers against two transports should be fairly easy. Good lord, you are far away. 25 clicks out. Okay. Yeah, you're going to be a while. That means the 13 is going to have to square off against two of their DDs. There they are. Ideally, just ignore them. Although I think that's not very likely to happen. And winning a gun duel against another destroyer is difficult under the best circumstances. When it's a 2 to 1, it becomes even more dangerous. But then again, I'm not really here for the convoy. So actually, we're... Whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down. We're going to ignore these. Uh, yeah, all the class. Two torpedo launchers. All the class, two torpedo launchers. Okay. We're going to ignore these. And just go directly past them. And hit the convoy up. There's your torpedo section. Yeah, it's fine. Well, is it fine? Uh, no, it's not. So, it's not that fine. Whoa! Oof. There's your target right there. That was actually pretty close. I wasn't expecting it to be that bad. See the Liberty and the Defender suddenly not so dangerous. Sure, they got a four-inch gun. Um, one on the bow, one on the stern. Yeah, they got a really top heavy ship there with that four incher on top. So three four inch guns for them. But I am not here for them. This is the prize. It's an important convoy. I'm not sure if that means that they're carrying some critical cargo and if it means that if you sink them, you actually get more of a bonus to the crippled British economy. Um, I haven't quite figured that out, but hopefully at some point there will be more clarity around that. At any rate, the DDs have buggered off. They're no longer really an issue. It seems that they know it too. They're just keeping their distance. Allowing me to go after the Norman and the Hasty. Hasty at 12 and a half knots is a bit of an overstatement. It doesn't quite seem to be that hasty. At least not compared to the 30 knots that the V13 is doing. Let's lower down some. Get some accuracy in. Yeah, we can basically cripple this ship. Engines are down, rudder is down. Easy. Easy. The real question is, do I stick around and deal with both of their DDs? Because I sunk a light cruiser. If I can sink two more DDs this round, that would be great. Because that blockade is hurting like hell, and I can only sustain that for about a month, if that. I would hate to request a bailout from my government. It's not something that a proud German admiral would like to do. But based on how it's going, it might be the only option that I have left. Okay, Norman is down. Switch fire to the hasty. How far away are you? Still 20 or so clicks out. <sighs> okay, fine. I guess the V11 is not really going to be joining this fight. At 26 kilometers, 27 kilometers out from that transport. Where the hell are their DDs at? Like they even forgot they have guns. Whoops. Didn't mean to do that. 13, don't. Split. There. I was worried that the 13 was going to turn all the way around and go back to the 11, as that was the convoy leader. No such thing. I am glad that I'm encountering these transport ships which are not armed. Because it means that the V-13 does not need to be repaired at all. 
very one-sided fight, but in my current economic situ situation, that's definitely beneficial. Let's see, I started with the British having a 31-ship fleet this episode, so now they have 30 after the loss of the light cruiser. I didn't lose a single ship. Uh, sure, I'm repairing some, though the heavy cruiser, but it's not that bad. I would really love to know how many transport ships they have left. Of course, this is information that you probably won't learn, because it would very heavily uh, skew the informational advantage to the player. Because the moment that you know how many transport ships they have, you can basically bleed them dry. You can take these ships of theirs and not kill them, but damage them, forcing them to either spend a lot of time in dock to repair, or scrap them. In which case, you don't even need a mission kill. You already don't even need a complete kill on the ship. It's just the British will do it for you. Because they consider that the AI or that they consider the ship is too expensive to repair, in essence. Now the 13 is almost done with the hasty. So that's their important convoy crippled. I guess it wasn't that important, considering that they only escorted it with two destroyers. And they do have more. But I'm going to end the battle here, because it means I don't take any kind of losses or any kind of repairs needed. They lost the transport. Ooh, interesting. Four heavy cruisers against four others. If I win this fight, it could bl completely break the blockade. But I'm down... <laughs> I'm down 6 million a month against a naval budget of 3.8 million. So there's a potential problem there. Okay, let's take down these heavy cruisers. Everybody, state your class. Because I have some doing 23 knots and some doing 26. Yeah, the, the Thors are 26. That's the only fast ship I have. Okay, fine. You're going to join that div. No torps allowed. Cruise around on 20 knots, 21 knots. And let's go and piss off some uh, British cruisers. We've made contact with the bridge column. They have a group of three and a single heavy cruiser. We're going to open up against their lead heavy cruiser with high explosive. Try to damage it as much as possible. And then eventually close in and start hammering them with torpedoes. Because that's my real weapon. The torpedoes. None of my ships are allowed to launch those at the moment. I want to get closer. Because these heavy cruisers are very much unlike their light cruisers. Very, very adept at dodging torps. Especially considering they can all spot for each other. Once again, the difference between having a trained crew and not having a trained crew is the Bavaria is already taking damage. But, oh, there we go. I finally did my first bit of damage against their ship. York, Bavaria, Thor, and Limburg. Let's go. Range, four kilometers. Is this a solo ship? Yeah, that's the solo ship. Okay, we're going to target that guy first. I did see some discrepancies with their ships. These are 11,603 tons. This is 11,842 tons. 8.2 inch armor belts. 8.3. Hmm. Could be that one of these ships is a newer class. I'm just not sure which one. Their speed is 21 knots. Okay, let's go back to higher speeds. Speed the thing back up and go right after them. Because I, I do have them in torpedo range, but at this angle, that's pretty much a non-starter. What's the Limburg doing? Not much. There. Bavaria and the York 3 seem to be operating together pretty well. The rest of these I want to dash ahead, especially the Thor, since she's three knots faster. I'm going to go and have a look at the Bedford up close, so we can deliver a torpedo. 
She's starting to take some damage. Bavaria is 97%, so basically we're, we're pretty even for damage. Cressy is 21, not Cruiser 21, 22, 8, 21, 2. So the Roxburgh is the only different class of ship. Also, they got 8 inch guns. Interesting. Maximum bulkheads. Maximum bulkheads. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> I have taken down these heavy cruisers plenty of times with torpedoes. A little while later, I have my ships pretty much where I want them. I have the Thor cutting off the Bedford from the rest of the formation, so that's definitely going to be a kill. Limburg is trying to find a position in front of the Cressy and the Cumberland and Roxburg. The only problem is that Bavaria has lost her bow turret. This seems to be happening more frequently and it's starting to get concerning. But it's the ship that we have, so um, I'm going to have to rely even more on the torpedoes of the Bavaria now. Let's see, Thor, let's go get him. Range 700 meters. Five hundred meters. Torpedo will wait. They might be able to spot that, but not respond. Hit. There you go. That's one. I want you guys to start firing at that. Now we can hit him with the starboard torpedo. Probably in the rudder. That'd be great. Because then we can fairly easily finish them off. There you go. Rudder damaged. All engines are out. The Bedford's flooding badly. So now Thor can come around and potentially whack them over the nose with another torpedo. In the meanwhile, we have the Limburg in a pretty good position to attack. Shit. Torpedo launcher got destroyed. Okay, fine. That's your target. Roxburgh has barely taken a scratch. Port side torpedo away. Uh, that didn't flood them out anymore, sadly. So we'll just have to use our gunnery. All right, Limburg. 800 meters out, torpedo away. Cressy spots it. I don't think that's going to connect. Not quite. Oh, that was a good hit. Nine inch. Yeah. Thor, slow down a bit. The Bedford just needs a little more persuasion about not joining this fleet anymore. Okay, there's your target. Limburg portside launcher against the Cumberland, considering she's just basically volunteering to get torpedoed. I am happy to oblige. Um, starboard launcher against the Roxburgh. Roxburgh, sorry. You go over there. Cumberland flooding. Oh, this is point blank range. Absolutely point blank range. Right in the bow. Torpedo away, and too close. It did not have time to arm. Stern launcher. That does have time to arm, and it hits. Very good. Okay, detach. Yeah, that angle's pretty bad. Thor has a flash fire. Well, that sucks. Okay. Bow launcher against the Cumberland, port site launcher against the Roxburgh. Carry on. York, hold your torpedoes. Don't do anything yet. Yep, yeah, angle on the Cumberland was pretty terrible. Port site launcher against Roxburgh. Connects with stern. It's essentially where I wanted that torpedo to go because that's a part that wasn't flooded yet. Limburg's taking pretty severe damage. Ow. Don't do that. 
Jesus. Stern tube. I think the stern tube launched. The target was too close. Shit. Okay, fine. Starboard torpedo tube. How have you not killed this thing yet? What is taking so long? At this point I'm using so many different ships that it's hard to keep track of who has launched what. But York does have a torpedo ready, which is going to strike somewhere amidships. No, towards the stern. That could finish off the Roxburgh in ideal circumstances. Which we rarely have. Hold. Turn to port. Got the stern tube ready. Bedford finally sinks, good. Okay, so a stern torpedo tube on that ship was not ready. Thor, get out. You're too heavily damaged. I might have to end up scrapping that ship, despite its excellent name. Limburg, focus on the Roxburg. Your type of shells, your selection. Uh, port site launcher, maybe is ready. I don't know. Not hit. Barely did anything because it hit a flooded compartment. Port site launcher was in fact ready. At this rate I'm going to end up hitting the Bavaria. No more flooding there. Stern tube? Yeah, that's going to be a hard dodge there. Bingo! Cumberland flooding, fully amidships. 5% buoyancy on Roxburgh. Do I want to end the battle? No, I do not. I'm going to finish this fight. And make sure that all of these cruisers go down. Torpedo away. Aft launcher from the Limburgh. Targets the Roxburgh. Please finish her off. Yep, that's the last of her. Um, do we have the starboard tube available on the Bavaria? We do. Torpedo away. Cumberland's desperately trying to outturn that. But might end up only making it worse, because I'm hitting her in the bow. Or at least I was hoping I would. But no such thing. I hit her in the two flooded compartments. Damage saturation I get as a mechanic, but I think it needs a bit of tweaking. There's more flooding, supposedly, that compartment. I have four torpedoes here. I have five torpedoes there. We should be fine. Destroyed funnel. I need to hit them on the stern. That's the issue, not the bow, the stern. Because <clears throat> this needs to get flooded. There you go. That's the compartments that I was looking for. That's the group that needed to get flooded. And dead. Last man standing, buddy. Start running. Uh, let's avoid the sinking Cumberland there. 
Cresty, despite all of the carnage, is remarkably unharmed. But it does not look like that's going to remain true for very long. You're going to try and bypass the target. Cresty's probably doing full speed, trying to get away. 20.6 knots out of her 21.2, so she's taking some damage, which is slowing her down some. But overall, almost perfect full speed. 20.5, 20 20.4, 0.3. Have at it. Funnel damaged. That's going to come at the expense of your engine efficiency. Let's motivate you to start changing direction. <coughs> She'll spot that and turn to port. No, starboard. But if you keep zigzagging like that, you're only going to get hit. Dummy. That was entirely avoidable. But now you don't have a rudder, and you're missing an engine. So now you have all sorts of issues. And that means the Bavaria can inflict further damage. There. Cressy, this time... Oh, right, with a damaged rudder you can actually dodge. Okay, my bad. You can pen that, you cannot. Starboard turn, bring all the 10 inches in. What is that stern 10 inch doing? The thing is stuck. Shit. You see that? It's directly locked into the superstructure. We got a bug. I can just keep on course of the Bavaria. That should be fine. There you go. One, two, three, four, five compartments flooding. I'm preparing a torpedo attack with the starboard launcher from the Bavaria. So I'm already prematurely turning the York away. Buoyancy 30%, 25%, 20%. Torpedo will wait. No longer required, though, because the Cressy is done. So that is four heavy cruisers eliminated. I will scrap the Thor and potentially fix up the rest. And hope that with the loss of a heavy cruiser, sorry, four heavy cruisers, as well as a light cruiser, the blockade is done. Oh! <laughs> this is the fourth time that they've decided, or the third time, actually, that they've decided to replace their Admiral. Oh! What? Okay, well, we're done. I didn't expect that. Um, it took me six years and nine months, but it ended with a revolution. Um, yeah, theirs, not mine. <laughs> My prestige wasn't very good. My national stability wasn't very good either. So I had to look here to see if it was a victory or defeat, but it's a minor victory. I built two battle cruisers, four battleships, 12 heavy cruisers, 10 destroyers for a total of 28 ships. That's not counting the start of the campaign. For a total of 281,000 tons. But look at the British. They built six battleships, seven battle cruisers, 22 heavies, 25 lights, and 21 DDs. I lost. What? I lost 179 transports and they lost 21? Good lord. They did lose well over 12 times the crew that I did, though. That is ridiculous. Okay. Well, that means that this series has come to an end. The next one is probably going to be Germany 1930s. I'm going to skip the 1920s. I want to get to some more advanced ships. Sadly, no 1940s campaign as of the point of this recording. But hopefully soon that they're going to add that new campaign. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you soon for the next campaign.